so we did, if you guys just watched the previous video, if you don't, it's up here. Uh, we decided to play a game similar to FMK, <laughs> if you know, you know. Uh, so we decided to talk about positions on the Buffalo Bills. Would you trade for that position? Would you pick it up in free agency or would you draft it? Just whole position groups. It's actually a really fun discussion. We had a few laughs. Uh, I Scarlet Witch Ball. It's not an easy task. Listen, we've been in the car for a long time together, man. It's so, sooner or later, it was bound to happen. <laughs> it's only been, what, five years? <laughs> um, Hag Sports is proud to partner with Mr. Rogers Homes. Sean Rogers is a proud Western New Yorker and is now your Arizona relocation specialist. You can see his reviews as a top 1% agent on Zillow, Homes, and Trulia.com. Go ahead and download his free Arizona relocation guide found in the description of this video. Subscribe to his YouTube channel and, as Sean would say, God bless America and go Bills. So, Paul, we have to move over to the offensive side of the ball. We're going to name a position group. Um, <clears throat> I think... Going to talk about the offensive line, wide receivers, and running backs. Because currently the Buffalo doesn't have a backup quarterback. I think that's something that you could fill in uh, fourth round or later. Yep. Or pick up a free agent quarterback that costs you six, seven million. Hopefully. If it's a two year deal, it's six, seven million. If it's a one year, play ten million. That's usually the backup on the market. One year, ten million dollars. No? A little higher than yeah, it depends, right? Okay, depends right. on what you're getting. All right, but anyway, we, we, we'll go we'll go over that in more in depth. The point is, offensive line, wide receivers, running backs. You want to go first or second? Uh, I will go. I will go second. Okay. What do you got for me? Running backs. Running backs. Trade. Oh, trade. No, you're not thinking what I think you're thinking. You, you know what I'm thinking. He's hurt every season. Every running back's hurt every season. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not going. I'm not going. Do I go down to the Christian McCaffrey wormhole? No, that's no. not the in, uh, consistently injured running back. That's the one I'm thinking. Oh, uh, God. I almost don't want to trade for Barkley because I want to see what Dable does. <laughs> <laughs> it would answer a lot of the criticism that we had. Yes. Of Dable just never using running backs correctly. It would. It's like, Barkley had 700 yards this year. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> the first season, he's held <laughs> all the game. I'd be upset, too, if I had 850 yards and 17 games. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not talking. I, I'm going to talk twofold. And okay. It's going to sound very, very weird, but I'm going to talk twofold. One is they could trade away. Or they could trade for. Okay. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that they're going to trade away. Like, Moss... And two years left on his deal is pretty enticing to a team that doesn't have to use a draft pick. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you trade that and maybe a pick for a player that has two to three years left. He's really good with that. He's been trading for guys that have multiple years left on their deal. So if you look around the league and you see a second year, a running back going into their second stint that really didn't pan out with their team in the first year, or their head coach may have been fired. Or you know, that's the big one. Certain right. scenarios, right. yeah, we're like, hey, this guy doesn't fit our scheme. Previous regime had a scheme for this kid, and they drafted him. We can't use him, but we could use that guy. We could use Moss. But, you know, and, and I'm, I'm not championing the fact of trading Moss. I'm just saying that the Bills have tried the free agent game. T.J. Yeldon, Matt Breida, just hasn't worked. So I think they're going to trade in order to get themselves. Um, a running back that's more consistent. Oh boy, do I have an idea. Oh, I have to look. I have to look. But there's a player that instantly comes to mind, and just the ADD is kicking in. I just have to know. Okay. Well, we're not lying. That works out. A few moments later. All right. So. But it does go against what you just said. It's a player going into last year of their deal. Okay. Okay. Which isn't unheard of. Rather than do it on free agency, they've only been taking up one-year deals anyway. Well, I well, think Yeldon that, was two. I go. think at the position, you would have to trade for this player. But the, the organization already replaced this player via draft last year. Head coaching change. 
So, do you, do you have any idea? Mm -mm. Okay, AFC South. I'm completely. Come on, roll with me. Roll with me. Jags? Yeah, James Robinson. He's on the last year of his deal. They he already, is? Yeah, they already drafted ETN. That's right. And now they have a coaching change. Mm. So <laughs> now that's that's I really like James Robinson. I think he fits the mold of what Buffalo really likes to do, and I think he'd be a great complement to Singletary, right? I just I I like it. What? A great compliment. Yeah. The, the backup the backup running back's responsibility in Buffalo is to get more tackles than carries. <laughs> I, I like James Robinson an awful lot, but I, I think I, I think that's a situation. Like I, last I like year might be a little sketchy, but I like I like where your head's at. Yeah, I like but I mean that's that's the process though that we talk about all the time, and and, and we want to let you guys know it's like this is the business part of it. This is what this guy's taught me for like over the last like eight years about this stuff. Because I'd be like, why don't they? You know, when I first met Paul, we we put this thing together. He was telling me, I was like, what? Why'd they cut that guy? It's ridiculous. He goes, well, he's going to cost $10 million next year. I'm, I look at Paul like, you just whistled at a dog or something. <laughs> what? Have you ever barked at your own dog? <laughs> <laughs> but the point is this, though. I mean, that's – you're going to do what's best for business in your organization. If yeah. this guy fits a certain mold right. and he has certain – that's why the Diggs deal we thought was so genius because he still had four years left. We right. weren't trading a first-round pick well, for a two-year deal. And I think the dynasty building is over for Buffalo. Right, I think you look at it and you say, "Now we take a we take a we take a page out of the Rams book, right? Let's Ooh. go get those. Let's go get guys that we know will come in and can start today that are on the back end of contracts, right? And let's just keep that wheel turning, right? Let's keep yeah. building. Let's just keep building guys who want to win. Like that's it. Just let's keep. You want to be here because you want to win. Let's let's go." That's why that's why you play football to win. Okay, let's go. You I, just keep turning those one year contracts. I agree. That's why a player like James Robinson makes a ton of sense because he's going to be on the final year of his deal. If you don't like the draft class, you trade for James Robinson. That's it. I, I like, can agree just, and disagree with you because of the amount of money that they're paying and they're going to have to pay. And on, mm -hmm. we think Edmonds. Right. The draft is the cheapest way to acquire talent, and what McDermott and Bean have been doing, or Bean more specifically you can get these guys on one two year prove it deals they prove it and then they go sign somewhere else if you're not signing any big name free agents yourself you get the compensatory picks i think right. that's what they want that's what yeah they cover. exactly that's why robinson would be uh, would be a very well paid running back on the open market he, he would well, yeah market. so that's why you trade for him initially right, to let him get paid yeah look at look at you ride I'm the still wave learning. With me. I'm look still... at you ride the wave with me yeah that's why <laughs> look at you 500 iq the draft <laughs> I love it. All right, we got to move on because we got to go to the offensive line. Offensive line, you don't have to do a thing. You have to do a thing this line. What? I love this line. <clears throat> I do I like. It. I do like Bates an awful lot. I think we've it's already. It's about seen... time that he got to play. It's about time. I know. I know. I think the line. But that's McDer That was a. That was. That was a bean trade. It was brilliant bean trade. It was brilliant. Do, do I? Do I just flash the video? Of you saying this is what the line is going to consist of because you're paying your quarterback this much money. Mm -hmm. This is what's going to be. It's like you're going to kind of try to steal a few free agents here and there. You're going to draft a few guys in the third or fourth round. Um, I wouldn't be upset if they decided to go for. I mean, what was Morse have? Like one more year left on this deal? I think so, yeah. Second round around a center? I'm not yeah, mad at it. Yeah, I'm thinking that's going to happen. I'm not mad at it. Well, you, you could always go the Eric Wood route, right? Remember when the Bills drafted Wood? And they put him at guard. They started him at guard. Yeah, I mean, maybe that's the route that you go. A lot of centers in college today, though, are undersized offensive linemen. Like they, you they don't are. get Eric Wood at playing center anymore. No, like you don't. You, you like Garrett Bradbury, who was a center I really liked ten years ago, would have been undrafted because of his size. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, like it's the, the mold of a center has really changed in the NFL. It has. It has. It's more cerebral than anything. Right? You have to quarterback that line for a young court. For yeah, a young it's very different. It's like the middle linebacker position. Right Could now be. that the league is so pass heavy, middle linebackers are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. It's why you look at Edmonds and he's such a thoroughbred. And you look at, like, you know, Devin White and Devin Bush, and I don't know if either of them are over 6'1. Some of the linebackers in college, they either fit two molds. They're either converted safeties or they're rush ends. 
Or do they make investments? That's exactly easy? right. That um, is exactly right. It's interesting to find out. But I I think they draft guys in the later rounds. They've been pretty good with their evaluation of offensive line. It's just getting the chemistry in front of the gel. Well, new them. new O line coach. Does that matter? And if if you're drafting, does a new O line coach make a difference at all? I'll say I'll say what you say all the time. If this guy stands on the table for a certain player, then he may. Okay. They may draft him. But I don't I don't know that. I don't, right. Is there any huge really huge need? You still got Dawkins. Still got Williams. Still got Brown on a rookie deal. You still got Morse for one or two more years. You still uh, Bates. Bates, you have to resign. Uh, yeah, HF yeah, he's going to be a restricted free agent, which I would be shocked if they didn't put a first or second round tender on. Oh my God, can you imagine putting a first well, he was, round tender on him? Yeah, you Bates, get it? Yeah, well, Bates was, you know, again, let's walk through that process real quick. Okay, so Ryan right, Bates yeah. is a restricted free agent, which means they can either put the original draft tender on him, a first round tender, or a second round tender. You don't get to choose what draft tender you put on him if you're going original round. If he's undrafted, you can only put the first or second round tender on, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, if he's signed by another team, you get a first or a second round pick, depending on the tender that you put on him, right? It does guarantee his contract, so it's a minimum contract offer. Uh, the higher you go with the picks, the higher that contract is. But Ryan Bates has tendered a first or second round player, I think, is a necessity because you'd have to spend that draft capital to replace them anyway. Yeah. So, so to put, I would put a first round tender on. That. Absolutely, um, absolutely. Because that that then gives the confidence in him. Yeah, absolutely. Now, if you guys want another little historic lesson, the same year that they put a second round tender on Ryan Groy, remember when Eric Wood went out and Ryan Groy came in? Yep. and Didn't allow a pressure in like third three hundred snaps or whatever. Yep. They put a second round tender on mm-hmm. Ryan Groy and they put a fifth round tender on Mike Gillis. Well, Gillis was original round. That was yeah. the original round. But they lost people lost their minds saying, Why do we only tender Gillisley in a fifth? A little history lesson for y'all. Gillisley, that tender was picked up by who? The Patriots. The Patriots. The Buffalo Bills used that fifth round tender that they got from the Patriots and drafted. Matt Milano. Boom. If somebody wants to give you a first round pick for Ryan Bates, you you made that investment a long time ago. That is a great return. Oh yeah. He already even, gave you the you return know, on that second, investment. Even second though. Yeah. Because I'd go with second too. I mean, that's not an insult to him if you put a second round tender on him. No. Um I think you only put a second round tender on him if, unless you are can like unless you're thinking like we might lose this pick and we're okay with it. We're the, okay getting the second round. Is the Adrian tender. Waddle a gentleman? Man, Twitter just loved his wife. <laughs> just loved that. Not as much as Rachel Bush. I'll shut up. I'll see myself out. The plus side to us having a new Twitter handle, hashtag 2.0, by the way, is that uh, we're not blocked by Rachel Bush because she doesn't know we exist. Hey, hey! We're never blocked by Rachel Bush, but I heard the band hammer went pretty heavy. I heard she swung a heavy band she, hammer. You know what? Because she defends her husband, which... Do they make those anymore? <laughs> They make wives what, like that what model is that? What model is that? <laughs> My wife will defend me to till death. She is the most loyal person next to you that I've ever met in my life. She is the Beth Phoenix to your edge. <laughs> she can she can power bomb me. There's just no doubt about that. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. <laughs> okay, so we, wide receiver position. Yeah. Mm. Uh, everybody's talking about this kid in the draft. They're signing Devontae Adams. <laughs> no, they're not signing Devontae Adams. Sorry, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. We're getting close to the falls, man. Everybody's <laughs> packing. Be careful. Okay. Um, We're not going over it. So, no, they're not signing Devontae Adams. Buffalo uh, drafts a lot here, right? They yes. draft a lot here. Yes. This is what they've always done. They draft a lot here. I think we all agree they need that smaller frame speed receiver. I would not be shocked if Cole Beasley is released at the end of the season. Pause for effect. Um, and I don't think you find hey, these guys. Comment free, I don't think you find these guys on the free agent market. But I will tell you that Buffalo is pissed that they don't have a kick returner on this team that they can trust. Pissed. Yes. This organization is furious well, that think they don't have a kick, kick returner they can trust. Stevenson. I don't know if they're going to give him time. To do that, you man. Don't? I don't know, dude. Like he wasn't even active for games. Like you, you held on to him. You put him on your 53-man roster. You cut, you cut your, you cut 
you could snap low 69 to keep Stevenson on your roster so you could IR him to have him till the end of the season. And then he plays, what, two games? And in, in, in the championship games, you don't have him because he's not effective. To? Who am I talking to? I'm just saying to? that it's frustrating. You know, I know it's frustrating, but you're the one that, that – Stood on a table and said that you have to earn your playing time when you're playing you for McCarron. You absolutely do. Absolutely. And maybe he didn't yet. Maybe he didn't earn I, his stripes in that receiving room. Maybe he didn't earn it. He's like, listen, we just can't have you as a return. Like with McKenzie, okay, he's going to play 10, 15 snaps on the offense. But even too. McKenzie wasn't returning punts. That's what I'm saying is that they they're going to move on from McKenzie, and I really don't think you're going to see Marquez Stevenson get a or, fair shake moving forward. Or did they did they want McKenzie to focus more on the receiving end? Nope. No way. No way. They're they're done. They're done with those two players. And I, I don't say that often, Mark, but I they, that you know was a they, bold statement. That that was pretty bold. That was pretty bold. You know who they're they're who I don't think they're done with? Sanders? Tremaine Edmonds. Huh? 